What's up, everybody, and welcome back to A Beer A Day with TK. It's a warm Wednesday afternoon here in Findlay, Ohio. I just got back from the trip to Atlanta, and it's time to do my first WTF Wednesday beer review since the Beer Reviewers Convention down there, our get-together at Brian the Beer Snobs. So, first off, before I begin, I want to say thanks to Brian for hosting us. It was a really great time. Thanks to Shane from Shane's Craft Beer Reviews and Mallory and Chu from Imperfectly Me Crafts. Uh, for coming down to Atlanta. It was really great get-together. Cool to shoot some videos with some other people, so check out their channels. I'll throw up the little boxes up there. Brian the Beer Snob, Shane's Craft Beer Reviews, and Imperfectly Me Crafts. It was great to collaborate with some folks, um, try some Atlanta beers, do some beer trading with people from different parts of the country, and even another country, Canada. Um, that being said, it's cool to be back in the beer shed and good to be able to do a WTF Wednesday beer. So those of you who may be new to the program, Wednesday is the one day a week when I try something a little different than what I normally do on the show. So sometimes this means I try stuff from the big boys, Bud Miller Coors. Um, sometimes I do stuff from microbreweries, smaller breweries, but maybe it's off the beaten path, a little bit weirder in style. And that's what I'm going with today. This beer here is called Tastes Like Prison Wine. W-H-I-N-E. Uh, and this is by Oozle Finch Beers and Blending, and they're out of Fort Monroe, Virginia. Now, I did one of their beers a while back. Um, it was a cheesecake beer, and I have to say, when I poured it, it was one of the strangest beers I've ever seen in my life. If I can link it, I'll throw a, a link to that review. Um, but it was really good. I was surprised. I'm not a cheesecake dude, and the bubbles on it were really big and weird looking, like giant fish eyes. Um, but it was a really good beer, so... I don't know, maybe it piqued my interest in trying other Oozle Finch beers. For those of you sitting there saying, what the heck is an Oozle Finch TK? I'll tell you. It's actually the unofficial historic mascot of the Air Defense Artillery uh, and formerly of the U.S. Army Coast Artillery Corps. Now, this uh, mascot's kind of like a flying bird. I'll throw a picture up of it. And it says that, I guess, the, the legend of this creature began in Fort Monroe. Most agree that the legend began in 1905 in uh, at Fort Monroe, Virginia, at the home of the Coast Artillery Corps. So as this brewery is in Fort Monroe, Virginia, seems appropriate, right? Now, this beer here, I picked it up because of the label. I'm usually not one for labels. Maybe if they have athletes on them um, or if they have bands on them, I'll pick them up. But this one is brilliant. It's kind of like a fake untapped check-in. So it shows what looks like an untapped page from someone named Grognak T. And their review here says... This is what I would imagine prison wine tastes like. It's not really sour at all, uh, at all, uh, and seems to be just an exercise in how many purees you can put in before the ABC has questions for you. So I guess it's the alcohol commission down there, right? A lot of places have these. They call them different things. Um, so alcoholic beverage commission. And it's kind of funny because for the check-in location, you know, you normally put it there. It says the commissary, purchased at the commissary. They gave it a 0.25 star, so I guess they weren't a fan. And it says, earn the conjugal drinks level one badge. So definitely a play on untapped, which I think is pretty brilliant. Now, what does scare me is this does have a hell of a lot of fruit in it. Um, so I'm looking at it, and on the can on the bottom, it says sour ale with cherry, pineapple, blueberry, blackberry, raspberry, banana, Guanabana, Guanabana, I didn't even know what that one is. I had to look it up. Apparently it says it's a citrusy banana. Gooseberry, pear, guavastine, don't know when that one is, and gave up looking up fruits. Calamansi, unaware of that one. Kiwi, lime, mandarin, mango, orange, papaya, peach, strawberry, and lactose. So if my math is correct, I did go to law school, so it might be wrong, not a math major. Uh, 19 different fruits. That's got to be the record for the amount of fruits that I've seen thrown in the one can. 7.7% uh, ABV. And the other cool thing it has on here is a little logo. It says stop, drop, and roll. As many of you know with these fruit beers, as the purees settle and they sit for a little bit, um, they, some of them, I mean, they'll continue to ferment. And a lot of times if you open them, you'll get kind of an explosion. So I'm going to stop and roll it because I imagine there's got to be some sediment from 19 fruits. There's got to be pieces of all kinds of stuff down in there, man. Now, I can't figure out what I think about this label. I initially thought it was brilliant, but now as I'm going to review this, the first thing that comes to my mind is maybe the fake check-in is correct. Is this an excuse to throw as many purees as you can into a can? Um, to be honest, I've never even thought of putting most of those things in a beer. 
And a part of me says, did they just have a bunch of purees around and said, hey, let's toss them in it and see what happens? Or was this a plan? Either way, let's give it a try. See if we got anything else interesting on here. The stop, drop, and roll. Um, oh, yeah, it does actually say the head brewer's name on here, which I thought was kind of neat. Head brewer, Rachel Howard. Can't say I've seen that a whole lot on cans. Now, color on this, I have no clue. <laughs> Normally, if Anderson and I do this, we kind of ask each other, what do you think? No idea. Um, I would think something fruit punchy, you know, reddish, purplish, with all those different fruits in there. Especially if you have blueberry and blackberry and raspberry, some of the darker ones. So, not a clue what this is going to look like, and let's pray it doesn't explode all over me. Oh, all right. Painless. No explosion. Oh, a little bit. Let's check out that color. Oh, I can see chunks of fruit coming out. There's floaters all up in this one, as one would expect with this many. The fruit appears always have a bit of sediment. I don't ever mind it, to tell you the truth. All right. I'll show you what the can looks like. As far as the color, let's get our chart here. It's interesting. Mm, kind of orangey yellow. If I had to look on here, maybe like a seven, like a, a goldish color, but more maybe a little bit more of an orange hue to it. All up along the, the rim here on the sides, I got little pieces of fruit. See if I can pull them out here. Yeah. Ooh, whatever those little pieces are, they're quite tart and soft. Hmm, very nice. Head, none to speak of. Again, on this style of beer, you don't really get much of a head. And if you do, it's fleeting and disappears in a second or two. Let's give it a smell. Funky and fruity. It's odd because you kind of pick up a bit of citrus and some sweetness simultaneously. Um, there are a number of citrus fruits in there. There are a number of fruits in there that are very sweet, like the, the guava and mango and things like that. But I guess if I had to narrow it down, I would just say vaguely citrusy, vaguely Swedish with a bit of a, a funk to it. None of them are super strong, though, which surprises me. Given that many fruits, I expected a, you know, like a really over overbearing smell, but it's not. Somewhat subdued. Hmm, pretty decent. All right. Can't see through it, obviously. This is, I wouldn't say it's cloudy. I think it's just got so much, uh, it's just that dark gold. It's really difficult to see through. I'm sure there's a ton of sediment. Oh, Tilted that a little bit too far and poured it a little too far. All right, let's give it a shot. Cheers, enough yapping. Let's use the old cards here to clean this mess up. Medium bodied, has a little something to it like a lot of the fruit beers do. I think once you get that fruit, that fruit puree in there, um, you kind of know something's going on. Now I wouldn't, I wouldn't say that it's like full pulp, full pulp orange juice like a lot of them tend to be, but you know there's something in it, and you feel sometimes a little bit of the the pieces of sediment. That being said, if I'm looking through this list of flavors, what do I, what am I picking up? Um, you pick up some citrus. Now I, I can't say that I could tell you it's the mandarin or the orange or anything specifically. You definitely get some sourness. It's an odd kind of sour. It's not that lip pucker the minute you drink it sour, but kind of as it sits in your mouth and you drink it, you kind of feel the sourness kind of take over your mouth. And it, it's actually quite nice. Now, I think the can's right. It's not, well, I wouldn't say it's not sour at all. It certainly is sour. It's not super sour. Um, but it's not so light that it would only be tart. I think it does cross over that tart to sour threshold. And the sourness works really well with the sweetness of some of these other fruits. I think I'll pick it up a little bit of peach. Pick up a little bit of maybe like a tart cherry. Um, it works. Now, like I said, a lot of these fruits, I couldn't tell you what a guanabana, if I'm even saying that right, what that tastes like. Um, or a guava steen. Not sure what that is exactly, a guava thing. I'm not sure what a lot of these are, but I would break this down into kind of similar to the smell. I think you get a little bit of sweetness, a little bit of, of tartness. Um, so I will say this, if we're going to go on our funky scale, this is certified Bismarcky funky. There is a, you know, it's over that limit. Um, it works. It works. I don't know how, 
Because I thought when I read that that label, I thought these guys are geniuses, right? They're kind of uh, beating all the critics to the punch when they say it's not as sour as it is and they've crammed everything into a can, right? It's kind of, I think it was, was it Billy Madison when he pees his pants so the bullies will leave him alone or whatever. Um, that's, that's what it kind of, that's what I thought initially. And now that I taste it, I dig this. Uh, it's really nice. If you're a fan of the fruited sours, this thing is, is really good. Um, really didn't know what to expect with 8,000 fruits in it, but they pulled it off. Um, so this is <clears throat> two for two for Oozle Finch. Both beers were ones I thought I would dislike when I went in, and I immensely enjoyed the pair of them. So tastes like prison wine. You get a big thumbs up. Um, I would love to have another one of these. If you like the video, give me a thumbs up, hit that like button. If you want to see more videos like this, please hit subscribe. And as always, got any comments or questions, jump in down below. Have you tried Tastes Like Prison Wine? Or have you had real prison wine? Maybe you've had both, and you can tell me if that is what it tastes like. I do teach classes in the prison, and I've heard about the process for making prison wine. Probably don't have all these fruits available, but it might be something similar, right? So let me know what you think in the comments below. Hey, cheers until next time.